several weeks ago, I took you all thrift store shopping with me and I came back home with a green leather purse. I thought about doing a home decor DIY with it, but then I got to thinking, how many DIYs can I create from this one purse? And that's what we're gonna do today. And you will not believe what I found in that purse. Hey everyone, my name is Yami. I am your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. If you love high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. So for this video, I am gonna be taking this purse, which I purchased for $4.99 at a Salvation Army, and I am gonna be creating several home decor DIYs out of it. I wanted to give you a little bit of inspiration next time you go to your local thrift store and you see something that's not necessarily home decor, but you don't necessarily have to exclude it. As long as you like the color and the material it's made out of, you can change it up to suit your style in so many ways. Before I start this video though, make sure you stick to the end because I am gonna be sharing my next huge room transformation. And if you follow me on Instagram, I've been kind of talking about it, giving you guys a little bit of hint here or there, even sharing the colors that I'm gonna be using in the space and having you guys vote on it. So if you don't follow me on Instagram and want a little bit more behind the scenes, make sure you follow me there so you can get updates like that. But if you guessed a room, I am pretty sure you guessed wrong. So definitely stick to the end so that you can find out which room exactly it is and why I chose it right now in order for us to redo. All right, let's get started. So I am just going to start this video with the favorite DIY that I created from this purse. And it's going to involve a little bit of sewing, but you guys know that I love sewing. So I was really excited to try this out. I had a couple of cushions on hand that I wanted to create new cushion covers for. And I'm a big fan of doing envelope cushion covers because you don't require a zipper for this and they're really easy to do. I had two cushions so everything that I'm doing here I'm going to double and what I did here was I created the face of the cushion that's the one that you're going to see on the outside opposite of the envelope opening. And after I create my rough cuts when cutting my pattern I like to go back with my rotary cutter and get some nice clean edges on the fabric. Once I determine and cut the front face of the cushion based on the measurements that I need, I need to determine the measurements of the two pieces of fabric that are going to go on the back of the cushion to create the envelope. Now you don't need a calculator for this, I just did this for the video, but basically you determine which direction you want your envelope, whether up or down or side to side. And in this case I did it side to side, so I only needed the shorter length. So I took the 12 and a half, add 6 divide by two, and I get the length that I need to cut my two pieces for the envelope in the back. So once I had all of my fabric pieces that I needed for the cushions, it was time to dismantle the purse. And I used this little sewing tool. I have no idea what the name is. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen it before, but I've forgotten. And I used it to remove all of the stitching from all of the straps, the pockets, and everything that I could in order to keep it as intact as possible. Okay, we interrupt this program because right at this moment, I felt something in the inside pocket of this purse. Mind you, I picked this up several weeks ago and I had not checked the inside. I basically just brought it home, 
put it in my closet and didn't pick it up until this past week. Now, as I'm taking this purse apart, I feel something on the inside pocket and it felt like a piece of paper and a pen or like a crayon of some sort because it was actually kind of small. And I pull the first thing out and what do you know? It's a hundred dollar bill. You can even see where I pause for a second and put my hand down in disbelief. There was a hundred dollar bill in this thing. Okay, that was the first shock. The second shock, I pulled out the next thing and it was a syringe and oh my, oh my, oh my God. That was, that was pretty freaky. Good thing, good thing it was capped and it looked like an insulin syringe. I threw that sucker away, washed my hands and I even washed that dollar bill, okay? But luckily enough, there was nothing else and I ended up being $100 richer after this. Those things never happened to me. And what are the odds? that out of all the purses that I searched through that day at that Salvation Army had a freaking hundred dollar bill inside of it. Anyways, thought I would share that little story with you guys. <laughs> okay, now that we had a little bit of fun, let's get back to this DIY. I ended up cutting the inside liner off because first of all, I didn't really need it. And second of all, it was kind of getting in my way and trying to figure out how I can take these straps off this purse. In the end, I figured it out and I ended up removing both sets of straps. Now, in case you want to try any of these DIYs, here's a few tips on how to choose the right purse. The first one's kind of obvious. You want a larger purse because you want to get the most leather out of the purse as possible. Two, you want to make sure that the leather is actually in pretty good condition so that you can work with it very easily and not have to worry about hiding any imperfections. And lastly, you want to look for a purse that's more like a tote because this will give you those large side rectangular pieces that you can cut from easily. And you also want to be sure that it doesn't have too many decorative details because anything that's stitched on to your purse, you will be able to see the little stitch holes after you remove the elements. So that's something else you have to take into consideration. So as you can see here, I'm removing the side pieces of the purse for this first DIY. Now I'm trying to stay as close to the seams as possible so that I can have the largest piece of leather as I can. Now for this DIY cushion, I was inspired by these beautiful color block pillow covers that I found over at Ballard Designs. They had these beautiful ones in velvet, but I thought what if I could do an insert that was leather instead? So I placed the two side leather pieces that came from that purse on the center of my pillow front face cover. I made sure it was centered and then I sewed it on. After the center piece was attached, I folded over each side and then stitched over along the edge so I can hide that stitching from before. Now you could choose to just do this as the only step in order to attach the leather piece, but I did want to make sure that it was nice and centered and secure before I went ahead and did this. And then now I know that both edges are sewed on tightly and it won't come off. Next, it was time to address the two back pieces that were gonna create my envelope for the insert of the pillow. Now, all you need to do for this one is create one hem along the longer side. Now, before I attached all of the pieces together, I got a quick idea to include one of the straps in the design. And so what I did was I cut the strap in half and then I used each one and attached it to the center of the leather piece on each of the pillows for a little bit of an extra detail. And in order to give this a super clean look, I used the current stitch line on the strap and I followed that when I attached it to the pillow cover.
Now once I did that, it was time to attach the two back pieces to create the envelope. And all you gotta do is make sure that both exterior sides are facing in and then attach all of your edges. Now I did want to mention that I also use my serger for the interior seams of the pillowcase. That way they did not unravel and did not fray. Then it was time to pull these right side out and insert my cushion. And I love how these turned out with a little bit of leftover fabric and some pieces from a $5 leather purse. I got myself some brand new cushions. Now for this next DIY, you're going to need a large embroidery hoop as well as a large thin wood plaque. I get these at Hobby Lobby and they come three to a pack. Now if you guys have been following me, you know I love having embroidery hoops because I think they're so versatile and you can use them for so many home decor DIYs. Now the first thing I did was take some wood glue and attach both of them together. This wood glue is actually from Dollar Tree and it works very well. Now in order to hold them together while they dried, I used these little pink clamps that I purchased at Dollar Tree in their craft section. Once the two pieces were dry, I removed the clamps and with the help of one of my kids' old socks, I used some of Rust-Oleum's H glaze and I stained the entire piece. Once this piece was dry, I took the other strap from the purse. These ones had like little grommets on them, and I thought that these would be perfect in order to hang this piece on the wall. I used some Gorilla Glue for this, and with the help of my little clamps again, I held them together while the glue dried. Then once dry, I removed the little clamps and then added this broken Dollar Tree mirror that had come off its frame and using some Gorilla Glue, attached it to the back piece. And that was it for this DIY. All right, so for this next DIY, we're gonna be using the larger side pieces of the purse. And with my rotary tool cutter, I made sure that I had some really nice straight edges. I'm gonna be creating some wraparounds for some candles. Ultimately, you can make these as thick or as thin as you want, depending on what candle you're gonna be wrapping it around. And then just make a nice solid cut. Now you can wrap these around in different ways. You can have the ends overlap and you can add little thumbtacks to resemble like little grommets or little snaps. That way it looks like that's how you attached it on there. You can use as many or as little as you want. But what I ended up doing was cutting off the excess, that way nothing overlapped. And then what I did was I cut a piece of leather and I flipped it around so that the inside of the leather would show and then that's how I sealed that edge. I basically just glued it on. I love the two-toned and a little bit more masculine look that this gives these candles and this is also a very great way to add color for different seasons to your candle holders. Thank you. 
Okay, so for this next DIY, we're gonna be using the exterior pocket of the purse, which I already removed. However, it had these little holes left over from when I removed the stitching. Now, because I did not want this to look like I had removed it from something else, I went in with some green thread that I had on hand and I stitched every single little hole like it was when it was attached to the purse. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this took quite a little bit of time. However, I do believe that little details like this is what makes a DIY go to the next level. Now, here's what it looked like after I finished stitching all of the little holes. Now, for this DIY, I also used my Rust-Oleum H Glazed in order to stain a large plaque that I already had on hand. You can find these at your local craft store and these are made by plaid. Now once that was dry I took that pocket and I placed it on top of a plaque like this and then I attached it using a more of my Gorilla Glue. Next, I used my Cricut in order to make a little decal with the word male. I attached it to the top of the little plaque and this DIY was complete. I wasn't able to locate a sawtooth hanger to add to the back of this little plaque before I did the video, but that's what I'm going to do. That way I can add it to the wall. Now I had this little Dollar Tree plaque that had a little black frame on it. It was the same one that I received for when I did the mystery box challenge. However, this one didn't come off as easily and that poor little frame came off in pieces. I got an idea to create a little sconce from this frame. So I decided to take some large popsicle sticks, which I have a huge box, and I began to cut them down in kind of like a herringbone type pattern. Using my miter shears, I was able to cut perfect angles on this in order to match the box and continue my pattern all the way down. Once I had the inside piece cut perfectly to fit, I would place it on the plaque, flip it over, mark it from the backside, and then cut it to get the outside angle. Next, I took a longer piece of leather and then placed it on top of the sconce along with a lift over candle jar that I had cleaned out after I was done burning the candle. And I used hot glue to fasten it onto the sconce. Now, if this was a heavier jar, obviously I would use a glue that's stronger, but since this jar is kind of light and not very big, the hot glue was enough. Now I also added strips of leather to all four edges of the sconce so that it would match the front leather piece. And I did this slowly adding a little bit of hot glue at a time and smushing the leather down so that I didn't get too many ridges underneath the leather. Now in hindsight, I probably would have done this before I attached the sconce because it would have made it a lot easier to do and I probably would have used a little bit of Gorilla Glue. However, the hot glue is holding up just fine. I added a little bit of jute string on the back in order to hang it, and I added some greenery, and it was complete. All right, so we're now on DIY number six. And for this one, we're gonna cut a whole bunch of little strips of leather. Okay. 
and we're gonna make a little tassel and what you do is you just fold them over on each other like this and then with another piece of leather you're gonna wrap it around and you're gonna glue it on Next, I took some wooden beads that I had from my stash and I took a large embroidery needle, strung some jute on it, and began to string the beads. You can make this string of beads as long or as short as you want. I decided to keep mine short and then I had these crosses that I got from Dollar Tree's craft section and I thought it would be perfect to add one of these to the other end. So I added the tassel by stringing the jute through the little hole in the center and then bringing the jute back through all of the beads to end up on the other side. I fed the jute through the top hole of the cross. Then I threaded the jute back into the first bead, made a couple of knots and cut off the excess. Now for the last DIY, you can use this idea for several things like creating a hanging lantern or hanging a basket or even some pottery like I am doing in this one. You want to create strips depending on the size of your piece. My little pottery was small so I didn't need anything too thick. And you can create any pattern you want with your leather pieces. You're going to want to lay the pieces on top of your pot as you're gluing them together because the top part is larger than the smaller part and when you pull it off you're going to see that it's not going to look even but that's what you want because of the change in width on both ends so definitely glue this while it's on there and then go back and remove the excess pieces Once you cut off the excess pieces, you want to wrap it around your container again, and then you want to start closing in the ends. Now, because I didn't have a piece that overlapped, I just took a smaller piece and connected both from top to bottom so that I can hold it in place. Then you're going to add your top strap so that you can hang it. After you're done, you can embellish it or you can leave it as is. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below which one of these ideas was your favorite. So for those of you interested in what my next room transformation is, I am actually redoing my master bedroom. Ever since we moved in, I've had a vision for this space because of how cozy it feels, even though the square footage of this room is actually larger than our last master bedroom in our last house. But there's something about how the walls come in and the architecture. I absolutely love this space, but I can do so much better. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you all know about my mom's diagnosis. And it's actually been pretty stressful for me these past several weeks. Since we have so much work left to do on this house, there are projects for like years to come. But right now I have no place 
to go and retreat to at the end of the day and wind down and just calm down after a long day's work. And I really feel like I need a place to retreat to at the end of the day. And I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person that if I have clutter around me, I have clutter inside me. And that's not good. So I came up with these plans on what I wanna do for this space. Now I won't be replacing any of the furniture because obviously our furniture is still in really good condition. And even though we've had it for quite some time, it's lasted us because it definitely was an investment at the time and we've taken care of it. But I do wanna change everything else around it so that it doesn't look so white because everything is white in that bedroom. I will be doing a faux brick treatment on one of the walls. I will be painting the walls pretty bold color um, for me anyways, because you guys know I like things light and bright. And I will be adding many touches to cozy up the space and change the look of some things. So I hope you guys are excited about this as much as I am, because I really am looking forward to having a space for my own that I can go to and feel good in and unwind and just relax. And let me know what you guys think about the plans and if you're excited to see it too. So that's it for this week's video. Make sure you stick around so that you can join me next week for another home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios.